935, 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, audio and soon-to-be video on RTC Channel 4. Hello, Scott. Good morning, Tom. A long time no see. Yeah. Oh, I think it was last Friday. Yeah, a couple uh, days at least. Welcome back to the studio. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, sir. And, of course, if you have a smartphone or a device similar to that, you can download the TuneIn Radio app and take us wherever you happen to be going. Pleased to welcome to the studio, Brian Johnson from the Fulton County Community Foundation and special guest who I will yes. let you introduce. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Tom. We'll introduce Kathy Gatchell here in a minute. Okay. Um, and talk a little bit about some exciting things going on in Fulton County. But um, it's well, we always have exciting we always things have going exciting, on in Fulton yes, County. That's yes, right. It's exciting yeah. weather. I oh, think, I tell and, you. And, and Ever changing. Like, yes, yes. Although it is fall, it's almost November. It so, is. Um, I, there were officially frost on the pumpkins at my house <laughs> yesterday morning when I got out. So it's it's getting there. But, well, we've got some exciting things going on with the Community Foundation. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to highlight. Um, of course, this year it's been kind of interesting. We've been giving out grants throughout the year instead of having a grant cycle. If you think back to last year, um, this is the time of the one time of year that we would have been giving out grants. Um, but this year we've already been able to distribute um, well over $100,000 in grants to community projects. And it's kind of neat to see how some of those things have happened throughout the year. And just a couple that I wanted to highlight. Um, the Kiwana Union Township Library, um, they had applied. They, if, if folks have been in the library at Kiwana, um, it's a Carnegie Library. And one of the unique features that they have is a downstairs... Um, performance room and stage um, and so they have a lot of community meetings down there a lot of um, performances and one thing that they don't have is a sound system and so if you're going to invite somebody in and say hey I want to I want to do a performance but we don't have a sound system for you to use that becomes a problem so they applied for that and the foundation granted them um, $1,250 to upgrade their sound and and provide some sound equipment for that room um, so that more people can use that now. So we'll be looking forward to that. Um, something else that's going on if you've driven up and down Main Street the last day or so, I'm not sure with the weather out today if they're going to be planting any trees, but um, the Rochester Tree Board um, has been very active in our community as okay. far as um, doing some different things, maintaining trees, and um, they are in the process of planting 75 flowering trees up and down Main Street. Um, they just started yesterday afternoon, but the tree board approached us and we granted $14,500 for them to um, plant some trees starting around 9th Street um, and going south on Main Street for a few blocks. Um, so if you're out and about today and you see some guys putting some trees in, um, look forward in the next year or so for those to be flowering. I know the one that I saw them putting in yesterday was a redbud tree. Just look forward to downtown Rochester coming in on Main Street and seeing this um, wonderful group of trees um, coloring Main Street and um, see how that's going to look in our community. So Excellent. It'll be exciting to see that. So, um, something else that's going on, and there'll be more news here in the near future, um, but uh, Promise Indiana 529 um, group is looking at helping kids start 529 college savings plans. Um, we talk about the cost of school, and the 529 plan is something that can help kids save as they're starting off in their education career. We, we have a lot of students that are in kindergarten or first grade that are starting these accounts um, to be able to make sure that when they get to be a senior, they don't have to worry as much about how am I going to pay for college. They've been saving for it through the last 12 or 13 or 15 plus years, um, some really neat opportunities. Um, we're working right now um, to raise some funds for community matches. Um, if students raise um, a set amount of dollars, then they're matched with funds from the community that have been donated. Um, so if people, businesses, organizations are interested in finding more about that, they can check out the foundation website and give us a call and we'd love to help um, organizations sponsor um, whatever if they say they want to sponsor a number of children or we've looked at it as 
um, help sponsor a classroom at Rochester or Caston. Um, $625 sponsors a classroom and helps kids um, provide that match for those kids individually. And of course this is a program at just Rochester and Caston because Tippecanoe Valley is part of um, a Kosciuszko program that actually started last year. So, um, so we're excited the fact that our three major schools in the community will now have this opportunity for kids to start 529 plans and then be able to be matched by community matches. So, and then something else that's coming up, it's, it's almost November, Tom. It so, is almost November, Brian, um, that's right. Giving Tuesday, last year was the first year the foundation participated in that. We're making plans for this year. Um, it's actually going to be November 29th. Um, we will have some matching funds available, um, actually a couple of different, and we'll, we'll speak with Kathy in a minute about some matching funds that may be available um, through this program as well. But um, mark that on your calendar. Of course, you have Black Friday, although I think there's some discussion about what's Thursday called now. All these businesses are opening Thursday evening, but you have Black Friday, then you have um, Cyber, at, well actually, step small back, business Small Saturday. Business Saturday. Small Business free, Saturday, so right. Encourage people to right. shop Cyber locally, Monday then, right? and then Cyber Monday, okay. and then what do we do with Tuesday? Well, yeah. we're going to call it Giving Tuesday. So if you have somebody you don't know what to get them for Christmas, <laughs> they have everything that they need. There you they, go. They tell you, we don't really want anything. Well, a gift to... Take them at their word. Uh, take them at their word. Right. A gift to the foundation in their honor may be something that, that helps benefit something that they're passionate about. So, so mark that on your calendar, Tuesday, November 29th, um, and we'll have more details coming out in the near future about some, some matching opportunities to help match some community funds that help make grants like the Tree Project, like the Kiwana Library Project, um, available for, for donors who are interested in helping with that. So some exciting times going on towards the end of the year. Exactly. So, well, we have with us today um, Kathy Gatchel. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having me. And, and you're with the Honeywell Foundation. Correct. And I say the Honeywell Foundation because before before I we got involved in working with this fund, I thought, oh, the Honeywell Foundation. Well, that's the Honeywell Center. And it is. It is. It is. It is. Tell it's, us a little it, bit about the Honeywell Foundation and maybe explain the difference between the foundation and the center. And gladly. Um, the Honeywell Foundation is the governing entity uh, that uh, oversees the Honeywell Center. And hopefully everyone out there has been to the Honeywell Center. Uh, you know, we have a lot of shows, usually about 40 to 50 a year. Uh, I was just saying last week we had Vince Gill. This week we've got Tony Bennett. So some exciting big names that come downtown Wabash. Uh, and hopefully folks from all over um, make sure that they make that journey down to, to Wabash for those shows. But the Honeywell Foundation is the governing entity that makes sure that the center continues forward. It actually, this year is a special year for us. It's our 75th year in existence, and we were started by Mark Honeywell. Uh, those of you who may be familiar with that company called Honeywell Incorporated, that's a, you know, a, a multinational uh, company. It had its origins in Wabash. Started with a man by the name of Mark Honeywell. Uh, over the years, he he sold his uh, his shares to the to Honeywell Incorporated. We are no, now no longer affiliated with Honeywell Incorporated, but that is why Honeywell name is so uh, prevalent and prominent uh, in this area. Okay. So you mentioned the Honeywell Center. Um, talk to us just a little bit about some of the things that go on there, and um, you mentioned. 40 programs and some big names. Right. I think most of us, most people know of us because of the programs that we have on our Ford Theater stage. We have 1500 seat theater where we are able to get national uh, touring artists and so we try to make sure that we're that destination uh, for the region for folks to come and enjoy a great night out. But we also do programs uh, outside of that as well. One of the programs we're proudest of is our educational outreach program and that's really why I'm here today. Uh, our educational outreach program allows us to take artists into schools in 11 counties in, uh, in the region, this region of Indiana. And Fulton County is a, is a county we go to regularly with these programs. And so uh, that's something we've been doing since 1998 and we service, we provide actually a, a right around roughly 50,000 different arts opportunities every school year uh, for students in uh, this region of Indiana. So you talk about some of the programs, maybe give us a description of some of the, the right. programs that the Honeywell Foundation is able to offer. Um, so 
I might dive a little bit more into this educational outreach program because I know just recently we have had a couple different offerings here in Fulton County. We had the Indianapolis Opera come to Caston uh, and they, they will perform for the kids and kind of provide them an opportunity to, to view opera and you'd think, oh, Excellent. kids yeah. kids and opera. <laughs> sure. But it actually, they love it because it's really more of a play and a performance than anything else. Uh, also, Steve Seskin was here uh, recently as well and Steve uh, is a songwriter. He goes into school and he works with students uh, to talk about songwriting and sometimes even write songs with the kids. He was, he was made famous because uh, he wrote a song called Don't Laugh At Me and that has really become the platform for an anti-bullying curriculum and of course we know how that's become such an important topic in our schools and so that's just kind of a, a couple different examples of the kinds of programs that we take out into the area schools. Well, and um, I know Last, I think last month we mentioned a grant to um, the SIO mm -hmm. group here locally um, for a banner program and the Honeywell Center is, right. or the Honeywell Foundation it, it's is a, involved in that. Yeah, it's one of those great stories of community collaboration and kind of where one idea gets to be born and, and then spreads uh, and, and gets to take flight in other places as well. Uh, we, for the last about 15 years or so, have had a banner contest in Wabash where kids from the school submit artwork, artwork gets selected, and then there, uh, those that are made into banners then are, you know, are downtown Wabash. And then that really kind of helps kind of give kids something really, um, it's, it's a big special day when they get to see, the, see their yeah, name sure, and their yeah. artwork hanging. Uh, Just imagine, Tom, if you were in middle school, you oh, could man. be hanging your art out in That'd front be great. of the radio station. That's right, yeah. So we just recently, within the last few years, expanded that to Miami County, and the group that really helped us was their version, their, their chapter of SciIO Design. And so through that uh, conversation, uh, the SciIO Design group here in Rochester decided, hey, wouldn't this be great for our community as well? And so we were so excited, and we're just really thrilled that we're going to be able to expand this program once again, and it's going to be in your community in the springtime. Uh, so you're going to have, we ours is a more of a holiday banner, so there are a lot of like Christmassy and winter drawings. Uh, so I'm really excited to see the, the spring uh, you know, drawings of, of the kids. Well, and maybe talk to us a little bit about how that program is going to work, how the, the students design it, how it's judged, places yeah. people can see this artwork. It, yeah, and it's for, it's, the other thing that's really great about this is this is a K through 12 program. So it's not just a high school program, it's not just an elementary school program. It really has kids, you know, use their creativity regardless of, of how old they are. It is going to be offered in all the schools uh, here locally. And uh, when the banners are chosen, they're going to be chosen by uh, the Akron Area Arts League. They're going to be the ones selecting those banners, uh, finalists, and they're in addition to the ones that will be made into the street banners, there's also going to be uh, ones that are going to be in the local libraries. And so there's there's going to be ones, at, and what's nice is that it's not just um, Rochester, but I mean there's going to be in the Akron uh, Public Library and the in Fulton County, um, I'm sorry, and the in, in, in Fulton as well. Okay, so. yeah, excellent. So we have, we have all three schools represented Absolutely. in their local libraries. Mm -hmm. and then, and then the banners will hang downtown yes. um, and spruce up the downtown. Yes, so, yes. Good. Um, some, some more of the art programs. I know there's an art gallery that mm -hmm. the Honeywell Foundation is involved with. The mission of the foundation is to just to provide opportunities, you know, arts opportunities, cultural opportunities, social opportunities. One of the things that I think all of us, you know, that are from small communities is we know that we as small communities, we've got to really, you know, work together and, and, and band together so that we keep our small communities alive and well. And one of the things that I think we can do is make sure that we provide some of the opportunities that may not always be readily available in a, in a small town. And so that's been one of the things that the Honeywell Foundation has really tried to take under its, its, its wing is to make sure that we provide those opportunities, not just for Wabash, but for the greater region sure. as well. And so we've worked actually for quite a, a long time with Akron Area Arts League uh, and primarily a lot of ways through our Clark Gallery, uh, which is our visual art gallery that we have just right outside of Ford Theater. Uh, because visual art is just as important to us as performing art. Uh, just making sure that, again, people have those opportunities to experience the arts. Then um, they don't have to travel to Indianapolis or, you know, go someplace, you know, far away that they can just, you know, go literally just a few miles down the road and, and still enjoy those kinds of offerings. Yeah. 
So if, if somebody is listening to us and they say, hey, this sounds like a neat organization, I'd mm -hmm. like to find out more about some of the, whether it be programs, whether it be performances, mm -hmm. whether it be a, a opportunity to view art, um, how would they go about finding out some of that information? The best place is HoneywellFoundation.org. From there, you can really kind of go to any of the other uh, programs that we have. We've, we've primarily talked about the, the Honeywell Center. Honeywell Foundation actually owns a number of other properties as well. I would mentioned it is our 75th anniversary. Right now, we are doing a special uh, promotion called the 75 days of gratitude and one of the things your listeners might be interested in is we are uh, you have the ability to submit an essay uh, about the Honeywell Foundation and and winner will be chosen from this essay and that winner will receive two tickets to ev any performance in 2017 so every show we have in 2017 someone will get two tickets to and that's about you know as I said 40 or 50 shows a year and so if anyone's interested in that they can check that out again at the Honeywell Foundation like we need to sharpen up our pencils <laughs> yes yes it's it's a, it's kind of a neat grand prize yeah. and so as I said we're we're, we're having a a big contest for that. Kathy, do foundation funds vary from year to year in terms of how much money you have to distribute and do these kinds of things with? Well, absolutely, because we are a nonprofit ourselves. Okay. And so we're a public charity. We actually uh, are able to do these things because of the generosity of others. Uh, we, we do receive uh, a, you know, a large amount of, of charitable contributions every year, and so that's really what allows us to do what we're able to do. And that is, you know, again, that's, that's through that initial vision that was crafted uh, by Mark Honeywell, and so that, that's really what we try to do going forward, is making sure that we can keep that vision alive, keep that legacy alive, and again, serve our greater community, uh, not just Wabash, but, but the entire sure. region. Sure. And part of the reason why we're here today is to talk about the fact that we're part. The Community Foundation is partnering with the Honeywell Foundation to create an endowment fund, um, specifically for uh, projects in Fulton County. Absolutely. Uh, today, and we have some matching funds available for yes. that too. So. That's one of those. That's one of those things again that we really want to be a partner in our in our communities, and so we uh, we already did this in Miami County uh, before, and so now we're expanding out and doing this in Fulton County, where we're providing uh, an endowment that'll be housed here at the Fulton County Community Foundation, and that endowment will specifically be servicing students in Fulton County uh, with our educational outreach program. So we're already bringing this program to your community. This basically is a guarantee that it continues indefinitely. That it's a permanent fixture within your schools to make sure that there's always that access and there's always this ability to have those additional arts opportunities and one thing that's so exciting with this year is because of this banner contest it should really help make sure that that continues for years and years to come and so we're really excited to establish this endowment and then on top of that in addition to just creating the endowment there will be a special match that we'll be able to highlight through the Giving Tuesday uh, promotion so so I guess if, if folks would like to support the Honeywell Foundation um, fund within Fulton County, give us a call. Sure. We'll talk about some details about how that will work. So, well, thank you for being here today with us, Kathy. Anything you want to leave us with about the Honeywell Foundation or what you do? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's it's wonderful to, to be uh, in the community, and um, it's just a it's just been a great morning all the way around. And um, you know, I just you know, if you ever have questions, go to HoneywellFoundation.org website, or you know, directly to the Honeywell Center. It has its own website as well. If you're interested in seeing what's the the latest that's coming, uh, either to to uh, the Ford Theater stage or or the programs that we provide out to the community. Well, thank you, Kathy, for being here with us. Thank you to the Honeywell Foundation um, for all the programs and, and services you offer, not only at the Honeywell Center, but also in our community and to the schools and, and help make Fulton County a better place to live. So, thank you. All right, well, again, just a reminder, there'll be more details about Giving Tuesday coming up. Okay. Um, we're looking forward to that again this year. Um, also, the Promise Indiana, if folks are interested in supporting um, students who are helping save for college education in the future, um, we'd love to talk to you about that. So, if you're interested about anything we talked about, you can find us um, online. NICF.org is our website. Um, find us on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 224 3223. 
or you can stop by our office here at 715 Main Street in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas that you may have for making Fulton County a better place to live, work, and play. All right. Brian Johnson, thank you very much for being here. Kathy, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. On the Foundation Program.